Hello boys and girls, welcome to my channel, I'm the Obscure Angel PT, and for today what I have here is Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. So this game was developed by the Square Enix and the engine, it is the old one, it is uh, the Fear or Fire Engine, I'm not really sure how to spell it. So this game was initially released for the PS2 a long time ago, while Square Enix decided to uh, remaster this game for the PS4, Xbox One and PC. So let's start with uh, taking a look on the graphics settings. This is the graphics settings that I decided to play the game. So 720p, which is the minimum resolution you can go with this game. Even if you, cre if you create um, a custom resolution, it won't work. V-Sync off and frame rate to 60 because this is how I benchmark it. Although, if you intend to play the game on this PC, I recommend it to use VSync and cap the game at 30 frames per second because this remaster is really something demanding, okay? For me, I think the best settings to go for is an isotropic filtering set to 4, wa uh, water shader at the eye, shadows, I kept everything on the minimum. On the post-processing side, we have anti-aliasing, which is multi-sampling anti-aliasing. Just avoid it at all costs. It's very demanding. Uh, for the post-processing anti-aliasing, you either choose FXAA or SMAA. SMAA is more demanding, uh, so I decided to keep up with FXAA. Ambient occlusion and depth of field are very, very demanding in this game, especially the depth of field or the ambient occlusion if you set it to full resolution. And, well, this is your choice, but to run well, I had to disable it. For glare and soft particles, I kept it on on. This is my custom mini minimum settings, it's my favorite one. The low settings of this game, I tested with the native resolution of this laptop. Okay, and as you can see, it enables ambient occlusion, it enables depth of field, it enables, it enables multi-sampling and aliasing, which is very demanding. And the SMAA keeps the shadows on minimum and uses the water shader at I and the an isotropic at 4. And I also created a custom minimum settings which I tested with 720p where I just put everything to the minimum settings possible including an isotropic filtering and all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, yes I'm recording with MS Afterburner and though it seems that this setting might not have applied right now so I'm having pretty much the same frame rate more than less as I was having. Oh yes, I had an isotropic set to 16. Okay, so let's put the settings that I do recommend to use. So again, no beat occlusion, no depth of field. As you can see, uh, on the FXAA, an isotropic set to 4 and water shading on I, resolution 720p. Okay, so let's check the results that I got. So with the native resolution and the low settings, uh, well, the game didn't even reach 30 frames per second, okay, so forget it. My recommended settings, the 720p custom minimum, I was able to get the frame rate above 30 frames per second on this city, and with the game on minimum, I got a slightly higher result, so the average was slightly higher, uh, nothing special to be honest, but the 1% low, yes, there was an improvement in 4 frames per second, Okay, so in a, anyway, if you cap the game at 30 frames per second, you won't feel a thing. You don't, you won't be noticing the game going above the 30 or going lower because the game won't be dropping from those 30 frames per second in this city. Although, when looking to Dalmasca uh, Easter Sand, which is a fight environment where you can fight monsters, uh, as you can see, the frame rate is much better. It keeps it uh, at a very higher than 30 frames per second for all the settings, with the exception of the low settings, which again it is more demanding. But that's pretty much the performance that you can expect um, from Final Fantasy XII. Yes, this was a PS2 game, and to be honest, there is not too much of a difference from the game, aside from, yes, right now it's the resolution is so much higher than it was on the PS2 and um, also the textures was reworked so we are using the same textures as the PS2 but it was upscaled and uh, it was somehow created a way so that they look acceptable so for the environment I really think that the textures are acceptable or even for the characters although for these secondary characters like this one on the cutscene this I don't know what the hell is this monster or thing, but you can clearly see very low resolution textures, which might be a little bit complicated. So, by the time of this video, 
I have no complaints towards this game, it's a demanding game, but anyway, even with this low minimum settings, more and less, minimum between minimum and low, I think the visuals are good for the game that it is, okay? This was a PS2 and it was remastered, so you are not expecting a big revamp on the visuals, to be honest. But, so, it's acceptable, okay? The performance is above 30 frames per second, so it's acceptable. PS4 and Xbox One also run this remaster at 30 frames per second, so it's good enough. The main problem with this game is the price they are asking for it. They are asking 50 bucks for a remaster from a century ago. Not a century, for God's sake, a decade ago, okay? So, I think this is really expensive. They, I mean, the textures are the same, just upscaled. Yes, the game has now a more softer look comparing um, to the original game on the PS2. But, most of all, I don't see too much work put in here. Yes, there is support for 21.9 resolutions, uh, for the ultra-wide screens, okay? And the game is capped to a maximum of 60 frames per second, if you want to try to reach it there. But... 50 bucks for this? Come on, Square Enix, seriously? This is my only complaint with this game, okay? So with this, I'm going to stop talking right now, and I'm going to let you enjoy a little bit of uh, gameplay, and uh, for you to have an idea how the game it is, okay? Also, second recommendation, this game says that the minimum requirements for this game is 4 gigabytes of RAM. I'm not sure if it is really like that, because uh, as you can see on the display, the game is actually using 5.2 GB of RAM. I'm not saying that if you have 4 GB of RAM, you won't be able to run it. Probably yes, you will be able to run it, but probably you might suffer from some stutters. Uh, because of that, but without testing, I don't know, okay? So guys, think about for watching, uh, I hope you did enjoy the video and it was helpful, and I do hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Now that's work. Sounds ten times better than running errands for Miguelo. That's right! Vaughn, you should give it a shot! And you should be getting back to Miguelo. Now, Kites. He was waiting for you. Oh, right, right. You there, let's see some papers, boy. No public passage on account of the Lord Consul's parade. Oh, gee, that's too bad. You see, it just so happens that your provisioner for the fate tonight, he sent me to pick up a few choice morsels for the, uh, Consul's dining pleasure. He wants them quick. I got the writ of transit right here. You see? Signed. Magello. I just hate to see the Consul upset because his food wasn't ready on time. And I sure hate to see him take it out on you. The Lord Consul is a great man, and not one to take offense in such uh, trifling matters. <sighs> Move along, boy. 
Wouldn't do to keep the console waiting. Right, gates are closed after this. Albana lilies? Never thought I'd see him growing out here. Ugh. This'll make a nice souvenir. Time to call it a day. <laughs> 